What up, naughty steppers? It's Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you on the Naughty Step channel. And it is time for video two in the 2018 Yearly Favourite series as I bring you my top 20 albums in bass music from the last 12 months. With most music reviewers, you'll see this list being their main one, but in the dark electronic music scene, there's little doubt that albums are nowhere near as big a thing as EPs. Music centered around drop culture is bound to produce such results. An album would have to be truly special to have 10 plus outright bangers and be a worthwhile listen. And it's taken a while for producers to grow accustomed to that format, but over time, it's become more of a thing in the scene. This year has had more albums than any of the previous few, of which there were some truly great ones, projects that must be acknowledged and lauded for their excellence, which is why I had to include this list this year. Couple rules and things to note before we get started here, as with every Yearly Favourites video. In saying this is my favourite albums, I'm also including compilations here, because they are albums of sorts, this includes normal compilations and remix compilations. Again, just one entry per artist or label to keep the diversity and variety rife and thriving. I am, however, saying that an artist who's released an album can also be part of a compilation too, which I can confirm does happen in this list. And with this video, I think that's pretty much it. Not gonna get deep into semantics of how many tracks are needed per project, but I'm gonna go with seven. Also, different to other lists from this week, there will be no special mentions here because, quite frankly, I don't think there are any beyond those I've chosen for this top 20. Working downwards steadily to the number one spot, talking about them more and more as I go on to reflect their positioning. Lastly, I'll mention this again as I will with every Yearly Favourites video, this is solely my opinion, one opinion, I'm not giving any objective views here. It's about how they make me feel, my favourites of 2018, those that I've enjoyed most out of the many albums I've heard this year. So feel free to voice your thoughts on my opinions in the comments down below, but also let me know which albums were your favourites in bass music from this year, let's get the conversation flowing. And so, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please, here we go, it's my top 20 albums of 2018. First up, at number 20, we have my favourite album this year, From the Dark Experimental Realm, which is quite something as I listen to a fair few of them, and that's Filling Spots by Woolly Mammoth. The kind of album where you don't necessarily pick single tracks from it, more just immerse yourself in and appreciate its complexities in both sound and construction. The kind of music to keep you rooted in your seat for its duration, admiring its intricacies and inner workings as you consider life's issues and wonder about the world, Music that's very important for this scene, that's for sure. At number 19, I feel most dubstep fans will relate here when I say that sometimes you just need a good dose of death step, and you certainly get that and then some on Code Pandorum's third album, Videodrome. I see this album not as something I'll return to for specific tracks, but as a way of appreciating Code Pandorum and exactly what he stands for with his production, as well as getting that much needed death step fix every so often. Some great collaborations and experiments here too, thinking particularly of the drum and bass track Brain Damage, not something I'll return to much, but I can appreciate its power as a piece of work and why people love it. At number 18, we have an album that doesn't stand up to the past efforts of this producer, but which still has enough to make it on this list, and that's Rez with Certain Kind of Magic. A more toned down exhibition of her style generally, for me the beats aren't as heavy, the melodies not as infectious, but several moments of inspiration across the eight tracks more than pull it through. As I said, I prefer her older stuff, but this is still a decent album. Her style is one that I'll continue to love, in spite of the ideas drying up here on multiple fronts, in my opinion. Now, it's rare that you enjoy a remix compilation pretty much from start to finish, when it's remixing the same song over and over, 
But I'd say that's the case with the remix compilation for Hero Bus track what the fuck. This is a forceful as fuck collection of tunes with so many different approaches taken in plenty of directions yet with that seriously gnarly vibe running through it from track 1 to 9. Different genres, sounds and approaches available for auditory consumption, a load of individual tracks working towards making this compilation a fantastic whole one to be remembered this year and beyond. At number 16, we have an album that I would say I enjoyed as much as I thought I would, and that's the debut full-length LP from G. Jones, The Ineffable Truth. I say I enjoyed it as much as I thought I would, because whilst I love his style and aesthetic, there's never been a huge load by the way of ideas for me with his music that makes me want to return to it again and again, which is the case with this album. On that level of sound design, however, he definitely wins me over. This is a mesmeric listen on that front, mind-boggling production, transports you to new worlds, Worth it for that alone, no question. Next, we have another album that ultimately let me down significantly, but which has just about enough to place in this position, and that's Excision's fourth and latest album, Apex. An album possessing sparks of brilliance here and there, without a real Excision feel to it for the most part. However, when I appreciate it's a new direction for him, I find I can enjoy it more. No songs I really enjoy here from start to finish, but some properly iconic stuff on show, vocals in tracks like Gold and Wake Up, the intro and build to The Vault is one of bass music's moments of the year. More than anything, it leaves me interested as to what's coming next from him, but yeah, an album I'm very much in the middle about, and likely always will be. At number 14, we have a compilation that is stacked to the brim with flavour, variety, and a whole load of darkness, from a label I've really enjoyed this year, and that's Interval Audio with Without God Season 4. When you actually think about just how much is on offer here, it's quite baffling. So many different types of dubstep as to lose count, drum and bass, experimental stuff, so much to take in across the 16 tracks. What's more, it's a relatively lesser known imprint, and it really is great hearing underground dark electronic music of this quality and ambition lying underneath the mainstream surface. I honestly find it difficult not to love Interval. There's clearly a great family vibe going on there, each artist doing their own thing, but working towards the collective along the way. I'm excited for what 2019 holds in store for them. Coming in at number 13, we have potentially the most diverse album I heard all year in the dark electronic music scene, and that's Lax's debut LP, Fake Friends. Another album of moments, some really good stuff in here, ranging across multiple genres, from dubstep to trap to house. If anything, this album is proof of how many strings he has to his productive bow. The thing that stops it being further up, being that there aren't enough tracks I enjoy from start to finish, it doesn't have a presence and sense of body as a project, and several of the tracks bring the overall quality way down. However, there are several tracks I return to here. The production quality is top notch, the general brightness of it is very refreshing for a Never Say Die release, so in spite of its drawbacks, it does excel on multiple fronts. At number 12, we have a compilation of straight dubstep heaters from a load of underground producers on the cusp of serious recognition in the scene, and that's Syndicate Volume 2 from Baseweight Records. Not only is this dubstep compilation complete heat, but there are loads of different approaches on show here, from straight up rhythm to more jittery stuff, bro step, death step, loads on offer. I could single out some tracks that I like especially, but I prefer to appreciate it as a whole. I enjoy it more that way anyway. I found myself listening through this thing from beginning to end a fair few times earlier this year. Just so many bangers from a load of fantastic aspiring producers. Another reminder of how much gold lays underneath the surface level of dubstep. And if you are a fan of that genre, then you must check out this compilation now. 
At number 11, going further up the list of albums I expected to like more, but like enough to include in this list, it's Dodge and Fusky with the greatest album of all time. This is an album of real highs and lows, and I think it's just the case that the lows aren't as evident as in the previously mentioned projects. By this, I think I mean that generally, even the tracks I don't enjoy as much here have that momentous Dodge and Fusky feel to them that makes me enjoy them much more than their ideas allow. Plus, the highs really are very good in their own respective ways, thinking of Back With A Vengeance and Hungry Hippos in particular, not enough of them to make this album indeed great, but enough to place it just outside the top 10 here. Going into the top 10 now, and kicking off this top half of the list, we have the number one mid-tempo compilation out there bar none, and that's Blood Moon from Synesthesia. Put simply, this is a star-studded lineup of some of the very best in the mid-tempo business at current, all of whom are making massive waves in bass music right now. This thing is full of thumping, mind-numbing beats, great melodies and vocals, very impactful ideas, amazing cinematic and picturesque atmospheres created throughout. Some tracks, of course, I enjoy more than others here, but every one has its very distinguishable selling points, just seven tracks, but that sense of concentration is what makes it so appealing. Leading me to think that there aren't enough compilations of this kind, but in all honesty, I like that this is the only one really flying the mid-tempo flag, and it does so very well. Now, I talked at the start about experimentation, and here we have that but in a more accessible form with Ivy Lab's second album, Death Don't Always Taste Good. One of those albums where each song tells a story, either through its sound and vocal samples or its general essence and feeling. Weirdly enough, and what makes it more attractive than most other experimental albums out there, even though its tone is quite understated, this thing has so many catchy moments to it. The vast majority of tracks here have something very memorable about them that makes you want to return to them again and again, which is quite something considering there's 12 of them. Above all else, albums like this just amaze me, leaving me wondering where these sounds and ideas come from. May not be for everyone, but certainly something to marvel at, in its creation. For number 8, we go right back to the very start of the year, a January 1st release from a label I've loved ever since this debut project, and that's Audio's Issue 1 compilation. I genuinely remember being completely astounded by this compilation on first listen, baffled that a dubstep album of various artists could have so much, well, variety. Of course, a reflection somewhat on the sheer amount of dire dubstep compilations released today, but I mean, even without that understanding, this thing really is the shit. It's got rhythm, standard dubstep, melodic stuff, bro step, even some electro from Spitfire, going through so many different sounds and levels of hype, and all of a pretty high quality. What's more, there's a real sense of journey and story to it as well, a difficult thing with 20 or so different producers, but they achieve it here, keeping you engaged from the first second to the last. The first I heard of a label that I absolutely love for what they're doing and the artists they're bringing through, long may their ascent continue. At number 7, and penultimate on my list of albums I thought I'd enjoy more, but it is undoubtedly my favourite drum and bass project of the year, and that's Mephius' sophomore LP, Manifest. Again, this is a collection where the fact it's actually quite high up on this list means it does still have a fuckload of quality to it, even though it's somewhat lacking ideas-wise. The aspect of the album that I would say is the least effective, however, the sound design is so riveting that it makes for quite the enrapturing, unputdownable listen. The rhythms and flows on this thing are absolutely insane. In that sense, this is clearly someone at the top of their game. There's such a depth and richness to his production that simply can't be ignored, 
the assembling of sounds here really is next level. Without tracks, I'll return to specifically and individually, but definitely an album I'll return to again in the future to have this enveloping surround sound neuro experience. Following on from there at number six, sometimes you just appreciate an album that does a similar thing for its entirety, and that's this collaborative album between Azide and Jay Sway. A slew of haunting trap beats made even more demonic through the menacing, remorseless vocal delivery of Jay Sway. The scenes created through these minimalistic instrumentals, full of heavenly vocal samples and seriously weighty 808s, are just so imagistic and real, the pictures of horror can be seen through listening. Very much of the Suicide Boys kind of approach, that kind of horrorcore style of music, without being quite as harsh sounding, dark as hell but it easily lures you into its murky depths. Not something that most who follow this channel will enjoy, but I just love when this style is done simply and effectively, and that's the case here. Now, amidst the sea of sameness in dark electronic music, artists that push boundaries sonically and stylistically have to be cherished, and that's where Bro Safari and UFO come in with their album Clockwork at number 5. This album I find to be one of the most creative and ambitious I've heard ideas-wise in a long, long time. Unmistakably experimental, but errs on the more vibrant, cartoony vibe, with so many distinctive, sticky moments that grab the attention effortlessly, across many different genres and moods as well. Very alien-like, outer-worldly pictures being painted here within a tribal setting, a lot going on, mostly of the trap and freeform bass variety, some parts high intensity, others eerie and reflective. And the range of sounds on show is pretty mind-boggling, the kind of stuff you could only dream of creating, an album where I just sit back and think I am over the moon that stuff like this exists. At number four, we have number one in my albums I'd say I expected more from, and that is the remix compilation from Pendulum, The Reworks. Okay, some may be surprised at me placing this album this high, and don't get me wrong, there's a fair amount of stuff I don't enjoy here, trust me on that one, but fundamentally I think it's a great way to relive some classics from the best band in recent EDM history through a selection of top producers, both upcoming and legendary, and in between. Sure, as I said, it goes through its dips across the 13 tracks, but I still listen to it because it's a new way of absorbing Pendulum music, a band so important to me and many others. Plus, you know, it does have some very good tracks on it, thinking of the remixes from Skrillex, Icarus and Moby in particular, as well as multiple good moments throughout in other tracks here. More than anything, I'm happy that this happened, and that these artists were brought together, and hopefully it's a sign of more to come from Pendulum in the future. Coming in at number 3, we have probably the most popular album between viewers of this channel, and that is the second full-length LP from Barely Alive, Odyssey. Not gonna lie, on first listen, I was slightly underwhelmed by this album. I thought Barely Alive had sacrificed a lot of what they are to go down more accessible routes. But the more I listen to it, the more I realise there are some truly brilliant songs here. A few that over time may rank alongside my favourites from them ever, both heavy and chilled. Not only that, but the ones that aren't as good ideas-wise have such a sensational sound design that that they become instantly lovable beyond their potential lacking in ideas. Over time I've developed favourites, which has stopped me listening to it in full as much, but I will be returning to this thing in the future for sure. What stops me putting it higher in this list is that I feel it needed a couple more definite go-to tracks to make the whole thing a worthwhile project, but it isn't easy following up with a second album as a dubstep artist, and for the most part, I think they did very, very well here. A super enjoyable LP. At number two, it's rare that an album really sets me back a few paces and makes me contemplate everything, but that's definitely happened on repeated occasions 
when listening to Origins by Vacant. This is one of the most heart-rending projects you'll hear come out of the dark electronic music scene today. Tracks to lay bare all your realities in front of you. Garagey, original dubstep kind of music built on these incredible dreamscape atmospheres. A hazy listen inspiring feelings of guilt false hope and regret. The kind of music you cling on to when you're in a bad way, and I don't like to compare his stuff to Burial, honestly I don't, but his albums had such a profound impact on me that to hear someone producing something even remotely similar and to a very high quality, I can't pretend I don't enjoy it on that comparative level. It's a special likeness. You'll see in my full review of it that there are moments where I'm struggling to find words because the music is so overwhelming, washing over you in this beautifully unforgiving way. It's amazing the way that it gets to you, using a range of different all-encompassing backdrops to give you an insight into your past whilst praying for a better future leaving a hole that you can't quite repair. Honestly, this album has left a real mark on me and continues to do so. I recommend it for reflection, contemplation, peace and aspiration. This album is for everyone. And at number one, my favourite album of 2018. At this point, you're likely to have guessed by deduction which one it is. An album of incredible scope and ambition, it's Temanite with Uprising. Quite frankly, this is pretty much everything that one could wish for as an admirer of Temanite's music. Someone who brings musicality and dubstep together in the most grand, epic, triumphant way, aspects we get in abundance on this project, with not only the prowess in bringing all these components together, but also in his ability and desire to constantly take his ideas to the next level. He never settles for the normal and basic, always thinking of new ways he can tell his story within each song that bit more. The drop developments within the majority of songs here is one of its biggest selling points. Its musical craft is unparalleled, but the heaviest parts must be praised as well. There's just so much to take in, but it never goes overboard. A stunning piece of work which has its calmer moments in incorporating straight jazz and funk and all the instrumentation that comes with that. But even those tracks diverting from the dubstep have their fantastic moments. I first heard this thing around a month ago, so it speaks volumes for how good it is, the fact that it's gone straight in at number one. Which I want to say I'm surprised about, but honestly I'm not. I knew Temanite had this project in him, because his approach and style deserve it. He had the means with which to execute it, and he did so with aplomb. And so that is that guys for the second video in the 2018 yearly favourite series, my top 20 albums of this year. Thank you very much and as always for tuning in. Be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts on my list but also with your favourite albums of 2018. Which ones did you enjoy? Did I miss any out? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video then be sure to give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hitting the notification bell along the way. For full reviews of some of the albums I mentioned in this list, check out the link next to my head somewhere. Don't forget to like and follow Naughty Step across social media if you haven't already, links to which including every album and compilation discussed here in the description box down below. And lastly, if it's naughty, then you know guys, so be sure as always to keep it naughty and stay safe. And I shall see all of you legends in the next one, which shall be my top 50 singles of 2018. Get hyped, peace out.